We are joined by a very, very, very special person. Love this guy. Dion, dose of Dion, for that matter. Dion, good morning. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. How you guys doing? Good morning. Good God, morning. what is there, a power hey. outage at your house? What's going on here? Look, look, look. See, I try to make it look cool back here. That's that's what's happening. All right? You know, I dimmed the lights. I got the flashing lights. Yeah. It's, not, it's the layer. It's, it's the layer. That's it's what like it is. you're shooting a porno that's promo. It you know, <laughs> it's supposed to look good, man. But I'm talking about it looks better when the lights are off. So it's, hey, you know. I, I agree with that. Doing? I'm good, yeah. man. I'm good. Jeff's always good. Uh, Dion, we just came off talking about Hutchinson Sauce Gardner. I want your thoughts on this. Who's the rookie of the year front runner? Uh, to me, it's Sauce still. I have a tough time saying, oh, yeah, a guy who's played at a top two level at his position all year isn't the rookie of the year. Uh, Hutchinson has deserved the talk. I think he's been excellent all year. He's been at it as advertised. I don't think anybody's disappointed in Hutch. But where are you with the defensive rookie of the year race? Are you on our side where it's, it's obviously sauce even though you really want it for hutch or do you really think hutch deserves to be in that conversation ahead of sauce garden yeah no you i think you guys were hitting it pretty well there and i hated to do it because the first time i dug into it i was like it's definitely hutch and then i looked at my oh, okay maybe it's not but i really wanted to be hutch <laughs> my my biggest thing though that i would say um and it it's still probably gonna be sauce i mean just from the whole look at it, right, when you're talking about a guy like Hutchinson, the first thing that you're going to look at because of his position is going to be the numbers of sacks. And when you see it being seven and a half, the three interceptions, that's super impressive. But like you said, you know what Sauce is as a top corner. What doesn't really get it, it's not going to get a ton of attention for a guy like Hutch is the impact that he's had on our run defense. Like that was one of the things I was most excited to get him for. But even with that, the numbers, they're not. It's just not enough, I feel like, you know, unless he ended up with like well into double digit sacks, which he probably won't at this point, to overtake Sauce. However, quick little point here, I think maybe the big thing is that also situation they're put in. Now, cornerbacks, we know it's very important what you're around. And I'm sure he's really impacted that. However, we do also know that Jets have maybe the best run defensive football, one of the best pressure, ability to get pressure in football without blitzing. They don't blitz at all and they get top 10 pressure. So supporting cast is super important. And we know for Hutchinson, he was coming into a defense that, supporting cast-wise, our secondary was arguably the worst in the league for right. about halfway through the season. So I think that impacts it, especially when you're talking about pressures and things of that nature. But, no, I think it's – I hate to say it, but it feels like it kind of has to be sauce. However, uh, like you said, Hutch has been everything I've wanted him to be, and I'm excited that we made that pick still. Yeah, yeah, you would make that pick every single time. I'm with you, Dion. I, I want to ask you about Jeff Akuda because to start the season, he he played really well, and, and then he struggled a little bit. I know he's coming off an Achilles injury, and, and I've always said I think he's in a he's in a tough position because you're you're coming off an Achilles injury. Now he's good, about to play his first full season, and you're the number one corner on, like you said, a bad secondary. So it's a, it's a tough task for him. But the last two weeks, I mean, being benched for Mike Hughes, I know he was sick a couple weeks ago, but your thoughts on just the the situation with Jeff Okuda, I mean, and he's getting paid $10 million next year. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And it's it's kind of weird for me because for Jeff Okuda, like I, I wasn't ever against the idea of, hey, Mike Hughes getting some of his snaps. Because I thought when Mike Hughes got kicked to outside, I think it was against New England was the first time we saw it. I was like, hey, this guy can play on the outside. And obviously he did that with Kansas City, so I don't have an issue with it. It's... It is weird with Jeff because you're kind of weird on like, where are we at with, with Jeff right now? Like when we always discuss that. I always look at it and say, from what I've seen this year, am I saying I'm confident he's a number one next year? No. Like, I don't think you've seen that where you can be like, man, hey, that's our one next year. We're good to go. I think you have to almost address the saying We still have to find that guy, but you can have hope that maybe he turns into that. But I don't think you've seen that yet this season. However, the pass rush, again, it's another big part of it. And I think we're seeing now recently what that started to mean. And I think it's going to start to come around by the time we get in next year. We're just kind of banking on that based on the run defense and pass rush improving as one. But it's, yeah, to me, that's just kind of how I've seen Jeff. Like, I mean, I think arguably Jerry Jacobs, you know, if you take last year what he did versus what Jeff's done this year, Jerry was probably better, I would say. So right. it's tough, but I think there's still optimism there because he does have all the skills. And to your point, it's the first time playing, and he's way above what he played as a rookie. Yep. Fair enough. I'll tell you what, Dion. The start they had to the season was not only disappointing. I remember, actually, you were on, I want to say, after New England or Dallas, I believe. And it was it was dark, man. It was it was a show. It was an interview. It was a conversation where it's like, yeah, this is not what we all expected. Like, this was supposed to be a 7, 8, 9 win team. Win one, lose one. Win two, lose two. Uh, some inconsistencies, but not a 1-6 team with that offense. 
And yeah, and then they turned it around. And they've won seven of the last nine games. And they are seven and two down the stretch. And they've earned themselves a final quote play in game depending on what happens with seattle of course but they've given themselves an opportunity and i think that alone has made the season a success and i can't believe i'm saying that given eight nine weeks ago dion we were talking about if dan campbell was even the right guy for this team as soon as I came in here, I was like, man, I, I think the last time I was here, we were talking about what does Dan Campbell need to do? He needs to win. And now <laughs> it's just, it, 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 it does, it, to your hit it best, man, it almost feels kind of like unreal. I'm like, man, I just think about like, dude, we're seven and two, and the, what is happening? Especially when you consider all the stuff that really happened as soon as the thing flipped. Like, we got a little healthier in the back end, which I still think helped a ton. But to, to think about you trade away Hawkinson at that time, the Aubrey Pleasant firing, like it seemed like it was all going downhill. So it, it's it's crazy to see what they've done to be at the position they're at now. It's it's unbelievable. It really is. And my biggest thing is probably some of these teams that we're supposed to beat. Like if you're this caliber of team, we're not just beating right now. Like like we're smacking those teams. You know that's Chicago. Like we we, I thought we dominated uh, the Giants. Like we've had a few of those games. And in the past, like I just you don't really see that. You're like, okay, oh, hey, beat the teams you're supposed to beat. We're not just beating these teams though. We're blowing them out. And it's way different than I've ever seen, honestly. So, Dion, I want to ask you, too. This weekend, obviously, big news for the Detroit Lions. You're playing in prime time, Sunday night football against the Packers. And it's funny because it all comes full circle. I think the streak get, got started off by beating the Packers' ugly game at Fort Field. And now look at where we are now. You have a chance to make the playoffs. You face the Packers again. Both these teams are very different than they were at that game, uh, at that point in the season. Uh, but I want your just your confidence level, your nervousness. Where are you at right now for the Detroit Lions? Because I think Dan Campbell said it best, right? It's a good stage for these young players. Um, regardless of what happens, I think we can call this season a successful season considering where they're at right now. Uh, they have a chance to be 8-9 or 9-8. and eight. Uh, But where are you at right now uh, against the Packers? What's your, what's your confidence level How, What's your uh, or concern level, either one? This is one of those games, man, and I don't know if it's just because it's prime time, but I am so darn confident. Like, just looking at how we match up, I feel like we match up so well with this team. I mean, most people believe it's going to be Green Bay that's going to win this. I feel like this is part two to me. This feels like part two. Like, last year was kind of part one, kind of dug ourselves out of that hole. And this feels part two. Like, you're going, I understand the Vikings won the division, but mm -hmm. the Packers are the king of the north. That's what they have been. So, to have an opportunity, whether or not we get in, you know, whatever happens there with Seattle, you have that opportunity to knock that team out. Everybody's going to be watching because it feels like that flex was for Green Bay. Like, hey, everybody gets to see this. This yep. team that's winning now. They're getting in. But then to be able to go in their house where we've been pretty terrible like the last 30 years or whatever, to go to their house and take them down. And I think a big reason for that for me is I love the way that this staff has played this team. Like the last three times we've played them, because we've only played them three times, two and one in those games. And I've loved this, this, the game plan we've had defensively. I feel like we've gotten Aaron Rodgers a little off it even last year. And then offensively, I just know we can attack this team. I mean, history has always been, hey, you run on the Packers, you got a shot. And it's just the belief is there, especially after last week, that we're going to carry into this week. I'm I'm 10 out of 10, man. I, I really believe this is going to be a Let's win. Let's go. I have no worries. Like, hey, I'm all in. This is this is going to be a win. Dion, I'll tell you what. They've earned that confidence. Uh, the way they've played the last nine weeks has been nothing short of incredible. I haven't seen quite a turnaround like this in my lifetime. But this is where uh, maybe it's too much optimism. Maybe it's caught up in the moment. I want to know what you think of this. I have no doubts, regardless of what happens in the game on Sunday. I have no doubts that with two first-round picks, two second-round picks, a third-round pick, and then the rest of the draft, of course, that Brad Holmes is famous for, along with the $30 million roughly, depending on what they do in free agency, this is a team that should compete for the North. I want your thoughts on this. I think they not only can compete for it, Given the uncertainty with Minnesota, the up and down seasons they have had under Kirk Cousins, some years it's really good, some years it's bad. But who knows, Kevin O'Connell? I think the, I really think the world of him. But you know, who knows if they're going to be a team consistently winning 11, 12 games in the next few years? I think they not only can compete, Dion. I think they can win that division next year. Your thoughts? See, people are going to think I'm crazy. Y'all got to me on here early talking crazy, but I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't think it's crazy, same... man. I don't think it's, it's crazy. Good. See, well, you're saying it's like tame to what I'm about to tell you because I, I'm with you on that. I feel like we're in the same spot the LA Rams were the first year when McVay arrived. After the oh. first year, they went 10 and 7. 
And what do they do the next year, right? They start going out and picking up a couple of those short-term deals. And that's kind of what they did from there on. They got a couple of big time playmakers and the rest was kind of, you know, normal for them. Maybe you get a big time trade if someone's available with the two first round picks. What I love about our situation, you hit it. We have the most, I think, consistency. You know your coach, you know your quarterback, you know your pass rushers, you know your tackles, you know everything's gonna be intact next season. Your quarterback, you all, you know what that's gonna look like. For the rest of the North teams, I'm not completely sure. I think next year you're looking at a team that they still have some holes, but if you get like a vet corner, like a like a dog vet corner this offseason, that kind of thing, I'm looking at it saying that's that's kind of where this approach starts to go. And I'm thinking, why can't we win the whole thing? Like that's my next mindset because if I don't get in this year, and I beat Green Bay, but then I'm looking at it saying, well, hold up, if, if Seattle would have, you know, just lost our game, we're in the playoffs. I'm looking at it this year saying, who knows what could happen? That's my mindset next year. We could go win the whole thing.